Sport Stadium in Prague, Czechoslovakia, the crowds gather to witness an exhibition hockey match between teams of the 4th Canadian Division. Czechs are quite familiar with ice hockey. In 1938, their star team played the Trail Smoke Eaters and lost to the BC lads to the tune of 1-2. From the face-off, the star-studded RCA team shows great form. A close play on the infantry net sees Captain Red McAtee strutting his old NHL stuff to pull off a sensational save. Mounting guard over the artillery sack at the other end is another famous pro, Gunner Turk Broda. The new rules of the red line and being able to skate right in on the goalie are all new and different to the Czechs. They pick up plenty of points from the Canadian national game at its best, played by the green patch flashes. Hockey fans claim the artillery team is better than the one the Czechs played in 1938. If they're good critics, then the United Kingdom puck chasers will have plenty to worry about as they face the Gunners in a play for the Canadian Overseas Cup. The next stop, the Empire Pool, Wembley. The shipyards in Burrard Inlet, Vancouver, BC, are busily engaged in peacetime occupation. Orders have been received from the Far East for a fleet of 15 China coasters. These ships will all be built in various West Coast shipyards. In the docks, the workers are engaged in assembling the compact 225-foot hulls of the 3,500 tonners. This is one of the first orders to be filled since the shipyards have been converted from wartime plants. The specially constructed shallow bottom boats are destined for use on China's inland rivers. crowds gather and no flags wave as the little ships slide quietly down the waves. Gone are the days of marine output for war. Now the task is to build for increasing Canadian export. As new markets are opened, the Dominion forges steadily ahead into a prominent place among the traders of the world. Hilversum, Jan Neuenhaus, famous Dutch illustrator and caricaturist, turns out posters for the Canadian Army. Known by the professional name of Dag, Yan's work is very popular with the Canucks. Born in China, of Japanese mother and Dutch father, Yan captures on paper the fancy of the Canadian Army. At the Maple Leaf Club, Yan autographs copies of his cartoons. Sets of sketches are snapped up by the lads to take home as souvenirs. They show just what Canucks looked like to the eyes of their friends from the Netherlands. Southampton, the Honorable Paul Martin, Secretary of State, and the Honorable Louis Saint Laurent, Minister of Justice in Canada's federal government, arrive in England. Together with Mrs. Roosevelt and the American delegation, they have journeyed to the UK aboard the Queen Elizabeth for the United Nations Organization Conference. On their arrival at the British port, the good neighbors are given a formal welcome by the mayor of Southampton. Amsterdam. The Berlange Bridge over the Amstel Canal is the scene of a colorful ceremony. It represents another of those acts of international goodwill which have characterized the Canadian stay in the Netherlands. On the bridge which first carried the Canucks to the liberation of the city is to be affixed a plaque, the gift of the Canadian army to the people of the center they freed. Le 
Lieutenant General Guy Simmons arrives to make the presentation. It is the last official act of his command on the continent. After the ceremony, he is to emplane for the UK and repatriation. On behalf of Amsterdam, Burgomaster de Burr receives the plaque which commemorates Netherlands' liberation and the hospitality extended by the Hollanders to the Canucks during 1944 and 45. London. The city of Westminster's mayor, squadron leader Keeling MC, arrives to inspect the Westminster Regiment of British Columbia. History is reviewed in the old palace yard as men of the regiment recall their unit's inception. Their origin was in the new Westminster Rifle Company, the first military unit of its kind on the Pacific coast of British North America. They were formed in 1863. Then the capital of the Crown Colony of British Columbia had just received its name from Queen Victoria. Now, red coats have given place to battle dress and the Westminsters parade to say farewell to their parent city, Westminster, UK. Montreal, Quebec, a new system is demonstrated which will speed airmail collection and delivery in remote communities of the Dominion. Twenty-foot poles are set up in the center of a cleared space. Nylon ropes are fitted to suspend sacks of mail. The Canadian Norseman plane is specially equipped for the tests. This type was famous during and before the war for bush flying in Canada's Northland. It is fitted with a pickup device as well as a cutting edge to clear the rope in case of a faulty approach. The demonstration gets underway. It is watched by government, post office and other officials who are studying the possibilities of the system. Capable of a very low cruising speed, the pilot easily carries off the mailbag. If adopted, much time will be saved in mail collection from the outposts of Dominion. The studios of London's British National Films becomes unofficially His Majesty's Canadian Ship Elstree during the filming of the stage show Meet the Navy. The great Canadian musical, which wowed audiences from sophisticated London West End to Gay Paris, is being perpetuated in celluloid. Last minute checks are made after the final rehearsal. The great sound cameras commence to roll, and scene 227 goes on for a take. Lydia, the tattooed lady sequence, features the seagoing trio of Pratt, Goodyear and Merton, who hail from the Montreal Repertory Company. Canadian Army personnel who are working as extras in one scene of the film are welcomed aboard the good ship Elstree. They work in the troop ship number called Bell Bottom Trousers. The lovelies go into their hornpipe number. In this picture, the stage door Johnnies just don't have a look in. Run like a regular naval establishment, off the set the girls live in and observe all the rules of a Canadian Navy ship. The original Navy show company appears throughout the film. Entertaining the Canadian Navy wherever it was stationed to playing to the world in its favorite cinemas, the lads and lassies of the RCN have marched into the forefront of the entertainment field with their grand show, Meet the Navy. Meet the Navy. 